Hi, Debonair Kovacs again. I just started this project yesterday of reading all of my 40 ways um, devotionals that are meant for the 40 days of Lent, and we're already on day six. So I've had to do them all, the first six in two days. This is number six, and then from now on, there will be one coming up every day during Lent. Um, just so you know, the tradition is that during Lent, the six Sundays that happen in there are, um, are sort of days off from Lent. Since I'm Seventh-day Adventist, I take Sabbaths off from Lent instead. So I'll be posting the, um, the ones that would come up on Saturday. will go up on Saturday night. And those of you who want to read them on Saturday rather than Sunday uh, can watch for them. That way they'll go up in the evening. So here's number six. If you stay on the path and you don't turn back, you will get there. This is one of my favorite things about labyrinths. My pastor used to say this. And, uh, and it's very encouraging about both the labyrinth and life. This goes along with the last one about wandering around, heading away from the center as often as toward it. I would love it if life were a straightforward path to the prize of the high calling in Christ, Philippians 3.14. In fact, I used to think that's what the Bible expression straight and narrow meant. Today we hear talk of the straight and narrow meaning straight, like a straight line, but that's a mistranslation. The original expression is actually redundant. Hebrew writers loved redundancy. Straight, S-T-R-A-I-T, means tight or narrow. The path to heaven, or for that matter, any other life path, is decidedly not straight with an A-I-G-H-T. <clears throat> In fact, it's often tortuous, like a labyrinth. One of the things I didn't know before I had one is that a labyrinth is not a maze. They are two different concepts entirely. In a maze, there are many false paths and dead ends, and it's difficult to find your way to the center or out again once you get there. From children's activity books to famous mazes such as the one at Hampton Court Palace, Mazes have been confusing people for centuries. There are certainly similarities to life in mazes. Life on this planet does contain stops, starts, false paths, and dead ends. And it's possible to get stuck or lost in a closed loop that never takes you anywhere but over the same old ground time and again. But a labyrinth has a different message, which also contains life lessons. It has only one path with no false starts or dead ends. One of the roots of labyrinths is in Celtic tradition. The Celts were fond of using intricate knots to represent both the complexity and the unity of life. In a Celtic knot, sorry, I'm in a room that needs movement to make the lights stay on. In a Celtic knot, there are no ends, and no matter how many twists and turns there may be, it is all endless, like eternity. This could be and has been taken as a symbol that there are no wrong paths and all of them lead only to God, but that's not what is represented by a labyrinth. You see, you can be in the labyrinth or outside of it. If you're in it, then, as my pastor is fond of saying, if you stay on the path and if you don't turn back, you will get there. But if you don't come in through the gate and walk the path, you will, in fact, never reach the center. This holds true for eternity as well as for the smaller goal of reaching the true center of your own being, where God would love to meet with you. You get to choose knowledge or ignorance, light or darkness. The same pastor is also fond of admonishing us to hold hands. We can encourage each other to step through the door of the unknown, Help each other to stay on the path. Lend each other a hand in the tricky parts. Sit down and cry together now and then. Meet you in the middle. See you next time.